how is is the most famous person on the planet, Tom Cruise, the face of an extreme cult like Scientology? How does that come to happen? Um, yes, he is. And that comes to happen by um, Scientology actively promoting for and trying to get celebrities on board. And they got Tom Cruise on board in the 1980s and have successfully kept him around and then reinvigorated him in the uh, early 2000s, late 1990s, so that he is a full-blown, full-blown fanatical Scientologist. First and foremost. That's and what did they, I didn't know about that. They reinvigorated him. What, did, what happened there? Well, that was the whole uh, tuss up with Nicole. Uh, when they, uh, what happened was Tom Cruise got into Scientology in the 1980s via his, um, his the woman he married, Mimi Rogers. That was his first oh. wife. And she was a second gen Scientologist. Her father had been a Scientologist and she was a highly trained Scientology auditor as well as being an actress. Oh. So they connected, had a you know wild marriage for a few years. Then on the set of Days of Thunder, Tom Cruise met Nicole Kidman, his co-star, and fell head over heels for her, decided he wanted to be with her, not with Mimi anymore. And Scientology helped facilitate that. Oh. Cruise was a huge movie star by that point. He had already had, you know, all of his 1980s hits under his belt. And uh, I, I think Days of Thunder was early 90s. Wow. And um, and so they helped him get Nicole. Uh, and he had that marriage through the 1990s. But one of the problems with that marriage is that Nicole Kidman's father is a practicing psychologist. Oh, and Scientology, <laughs> yeah, Scientology hates psychiatry and psychology, um, like badly. And so, yeah, uh, yeah it looks like we're, it looks like this is all working here. So, um, then he started kind of distancing a little bit from Scientology. This is by mid '90s we're talking about. He was maybe not doing so much Scientology sort of maybe talking about it a little bit here and there, read a book, stuff like that, but no couch jumping, no wild, you know, assertions about it, no like in your face proselytizing of it. He was kind of cool on it. And Nicole, I think, was kind of, you know, Nicole Kidman's influence, I think, was part of that. She started doing Scientology and got up, you know, up to the confidential levels but she was never really totally on board with it the same way he had been. So their marriage, you know, ups and downs, whatever. Tom Cruise's life, he starts getting talked to a little bit more about Scientology. This guy, Marty Rathbun, who's now out, long time out, was uh, basically became Tom Cruise's handler. He was kind of put on the case to get Tom Cruise back on board, like fully and completely and really rejuvenate him in Scientology. That's what David Miscavige, the leader of Scientology, that's what he wanted. He wanted Tom Cruise back on board fully. And in order to do that, Marty um, engaged in what we'll call a little bit of parental alienation, where he decided to turn the kids against Nicole and go for Tom and pro Scientology, Scientology, Scientology. And Nicole and, uh, you know, that didn't respond well to that, I suppose, because they ended up separating and uh, divorcing. And that's how that kind of happened is it was Scientology's influence because they were trying to get him fully back on board and they succeeded. I'm not sure exactly what they did. I know some of what they did. But it and it's, you know, it's kind of Scientology related stuff. But they basically convinced Tom that Nicole and Nicole's father and that connection and that whole situation was a troublesome, problematic thing for him to have in his life. And it was a bad negative influence on his kids. They were adopted children. And I convinced him well enough that they ended up separating and divorcing. And uh, and then, of course, Scientology then with with Cruz fully back on board, 
And David Miscavige really integrated into Tom Cruise's life now as his best friend, best bud. They were bros. Now they start talking, Tom and David Miscavige, about what they're going to do about Scientology and let's grow Scientology. It's like Scientology really, really big and, and the thing to do. And Tom decided in the early 2000s that he would be the big media you know, spokesperson, celebrity personality, really do his job, do his part as a Scientologist and as the most famous celebrity in the world. And that's why we saw all the antics that he engaged in in the, in the early, mid-2000s. Oh, my word. So it's, it's, the, the summary of the, of, the, of the history there. So I know, I know a lot of people are obviously familiar with Scientology and even more are obviously familiar with Tom Cruise and his involvement in it. But I think, I, I don't know, I might be wrong about this, but I think just what you've said, which should be common knowledge, I think you might have blown a few minds there. Because I think, firstly, I don't think many people know about Tom Cruise's first wife at all let alone that she was who got him into Scientology. Um, and secondly, I don't, I, I, while people know so that, he's, that he's big in Scientology, I don't think people are fully aware of quite what a role he's played in, in keeping it alive and propelling the whole thing. This is a huge cult. So let's go back to, I mean, what can you tell me about, uh, was it Mimi Rogers you said? Mm-hmm, that's right. Hmm, what yeah, can you tell she, me about her? Well, she's, you know, she's obviously was an actress. She was a bit bigger in the 80s than she has been since. But she, um, she was, she was an auditor. She's a trained auditor, and what that means is, is uh, it's a uh, Scientology version of a counselor, right, or a therapist. It's really not therapy, and, and I take great pains to try to say it's not, but it kind of looks like it, you know. And she was trained in that, and again, second generation. She'd been raised, as I understand it, she was raised in Scientology or or had had influence with that uh, through her, most of her life. So Tom had a problem with, um, as I understand it, the, the hook, the thing that kind of got him to start paying attention to Scientology and what it could do for him is he was suffering from dyslexia. He had, he had reading issues and study issues, and he had a real hard time with that. And by um, the study methodology that Scientology promotes includes spending an awful lot of time in dictionaries clearing up words, understanding words, the symbols, the ideas that are being communicated. And he really got into that, like seriously, really got into backing that up. And apparently it helped him in some fashion, enough that he promoted it publicly and actually even went and spoke at the grand opening of a Scientology uh, educational facility called Applied Scholastics. And he was really gung-ho and really on board with this. And, you know, good for him. I'm pretty sure he had, you know, good intent when it comes to spreading, you know, how to how to handle learning disabilities or study right. issues or problems. And if he gained from that, then, then great. Um, but then he dumped Mimi. <laughs> right? And then it's like, oh, yeah, but I don't, you know, and once Nicole came along, it was like, oh, you know, starry eyed and. And it was, it, as I understand it, it was pretty unceremonious. I mean, it was just, okay, well, this is what I want and this is what I'm going to do. And, and, uh, and if we look at Mimi, Nicole, Katie, we see Tom as somebody, it, I don't know that it's, you know, such a stretch to say that this is a guy who likes new things, <laughs> novelty. He likes adventure and excitement and, and things always mixed up. And what's the next big mountain to climb? What's the next big goal to attain? And that's kind of his thing. And I guess it applies to his relationships as well because he's had a bit of a hard time maintaining long-term relationships. Mimi Rogers must feel a bit pissed off, really, because she got him in. She must be like, I got you into this whole thing and now I'm being replaced. Has she ever spoken out about that? any of this? Not that I'm aware of. And not only would there be... Um, you know, non-disclosure agreements up one side and down the other with that. But also she, as far as I, I, I don't know if she's even left Scientology or, or has a problem with Scientology. And if, if she is still connected with the mother church through family connections, business associates, whatever, or she's still a believer, which is possible. I, I, I've never heard that she has officially left Scientology. Mm -hmm. That itself would be a pressure point on her to not say a word 
doesn't matter how you feel about it. You're not saying anything publicly about this. Tom is the star. You are not. Keep your damn mouth shut would be the attitude of the church towards her. Watch the full interview with Chris Shelton about Tom Cruise and his three wives over here. Or tune in to my chat with Aaron Smith Levin, the former Scientologist, and Kelly Teal, former Nixium member, to see the differences and comparisons between those two cults.